Screen Directors Playhouse. Bringing you each week an outstanding original screenplay. Chosen and directed by one of the country's foremost motion picture directors. Tonight's Screen Directors Playhouse proudly presents Miss Ida Lupino, renowned for her direction of The Hitchhiker and The Bigamist. For this evening, Miss Lupino brings us the searching story of a deaf girl and the man she is afraid to love, entitled Number Five Checked Out. In tonight's cast are Teresa Wright, Peter Laurie, and William Tallman. Just about does it. Hmm? Mary, are you sure you did the right thing in coming up here? Of course I did. I love it here. But I'll worry about you every moment that I'm gone. Now, that's foolish. The season opening in two weeks is certainly plenty to do. We just sit down and relax. You know, there's nothing to worry about. It just doesn't seem right for me to be running off like this. With Uncle Martin sick, you have to go whether you want to or not. Maybe next year I'll have enough put by to send you to that specialist in the East. Dad, if we start thinking about that now, we'll never get you out of here. I can't help thinking about it. I've been thinking about it for years. Oh, if we only knew then of the things that they can do now for deafness. By golly, I'm going to send you to that specialist if I have to sell this place to do it. I want to live long enough to see you married. You can't meet anybody in that school down there teaching and helping those kids. It's about time somebody was helping you. Oh. You can't spend your life down there teaching those kids in that school. You expect to have a home of your own someday. You've got to think about that, Mary. Dad, can't you understand there's no hope for me? Now, you quit talking like that. That isn't what you teach those kids, is it? No, no. I guess right now I just can't seem to practice what I preach. I had one experience. It took me a long time to get over it. And last week I ran into him with his wife. And his wife might have been me, only I was deaf. That made the difference. That's why I really came down here. To try to forget all over again. Remember what they say about one drop of water doesn't make an ocean. You're better off without him. Come on, Dad. You've got a long drive ahead of you. All right. I'll stop in the village and send Timmy up here. He's a good boy. He'll give you a hand. All right, Dad. I'll feel much easier knowing there's a man around. Here, give me that, honey. I, I hope I've put everything in here. If I've forgotten anything, just write me a letter. I'll send you a card. Take good care of yourself. Thanks, Dad. I will. Have a good trip. Remember now, you drive carefully. I will. Bye.
Excuse me. Have you any vacancies? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Okay, now, can I do something for you? Well, you could turn the radio off. That would help some. What can I do for you? Have you any vacancies? Well, we're not open yet, not for two weeks. Just two or three days, myself and a friend. Oh, well, I don't think I can. They said you would, down in the village. Well, if you don't mind not having any service. We don't mind. All right. Good, it's a deal. I think you'll find this cabin comfortable. I'll show you where it is. Uh, number five, just over the hill. Right, we'll find it. If you need anything, I'm here all the time. Thanks. Be seeing you. Night. Willie, you said there wasn't going to be any shooting. That's what you said. That's right. That's what I said. One dead, one dying, and half million dollar bank robbery. Four bandits make clean getaway. No shooting. I told you it was an accident. An accident. It happens sometimes. It says here the guy was only 28 years old. Married. Two kids. Oh, no. Oh, that's too bad. Boys or girls? It's no joke. Am I laughing? The guy is dead. Look, Barney boy. I'll explain it to you. It's very simple, see? Here I was, like this. Now, he had to see the gun, huh? But no, he had to get in the way. Now, how are you going to argue with a man that gets in the way of a gun, huh? That's the silliest thing a man can do. Never get in the way. Never. According to witnesses, the gunman deliberately pumped four bullets into the body. Deliberately. Did you hear that, Willie? And you said there wasn't going to be any shooting. You give me your word. That's right, but there, there was a last-minute switch. Nobody told me anything about a last-minute switch. There I am, sitting in the car with the motor running like a big dope. I'm just the driver. Nobody bothered to tell me. So what? I want out. Out. Now, don't you think, Barney Boy, that's a little too late? You see, once you're in it, there is no way out, at least. Not that I know of. Why don't you relax, Barney boy? Look, there's nothing to do but wait. Now, maybe, maybe a couple of days. Then I call Sam, I call Georgie, I give him our new address, and then when they get here, we count up the money, and we make four equal parts. Everything nice and honest. That's the way I like it. Now, you want your share, don't you? Don't you want your share, Barney? I want out. That's all I'm thinking, how I can get out. And I want to sleep. I need eight hours sleep. You should get some, too. It's good for you. Look, Barney, we are all in it like this. That's good. That's the only way we are safe. Good night. You wouldn't be asleep. I brought you some extra blankets, and I forgot to have you sign the register. Would you sign, please, for you and your friends? There's not much to do around here before the season starts. The town is kind of dead. If you and your friend would like to go fishing or hiking, or, or there are some beautiful drives. You got a car? Oh, sure. I'd be glad to show you where the good fishing is. We have rods and reels and everything you need. That's very nice of you. As a matter of fact, I'd hope to get in some fishing when I was up here. Oh, good. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night.
morning. It's always chilly when you get up. I thought you'd like to have some coffee. I asked your friend if he'd like to go fishing. Maybe you'd like to go, too. Deep Lake's only a mile down the road. I'd be glad to take you. If you want anything, I'll be in the office. I just wanted to turn the dishes and say thank you for breakfast. It certainly hit the spot. I'm glad you liked it. How about that fishing deal you were talking about? I'd like to take you up on that. Good. When? Right now. All right. Where do we go? Well, the uh, best place is the other side of the lake. It's a lovely walk. I'm not much of a walker. Why don't we take your car? Sure. Jimmy will be here pretty soon and I can leave. I'll need some tackle and I'll make some sandwiches. Not even a nibble. Maybe they know it's not the season yet. <laughs> Something must be wrong. Suppose we try some new bait. All right, what'll we try? Mm -hmm. Let's try the salmon eggs. I'll get them. Okay, I'll take it. Mary! You want the red ones or the white ones? Mary! Mary. 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 Oh, excuse me. Did you say something? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't hear you. I'm deaf. I said the red ones or the white ones? The red ones? I don't think you understood me. I said I'm deaf. You get by with it, it's just great. I mean that. It's wonderful the way you read lips. Thank you. I've been doing it since I was 12. Nobody could ever tell it. They'd find out soon enough. It's stupid to try and hide it. I don't much anymore. Since when? Since the boy I was about to marry decided he couldn't go through with it. A guy like that isn't worth tying up to. I hope you went right out and got yourself a new boyfriend. No time for that, Barney. A girl with your looks? How do you keep the fellas away from you? I don't try. Well, you watch. The right guy will come along. And I'd say he'd be a pretty lucky fella. Thank you. Seriously, Barney. I'm pretty busy when I'm in the city. I work at the Miller Institute for the Deaf. Ever hear of it? No, I missed that one. It's where they learn to read lips. I'm a teacher there. Hey, wouldn't it be something if you could teach a guy not to hear? That's a strange thing to say. No. Sometimes it would be great if you could turn it all off. All you gotta do, honey, is turn your head or close your eyes. If you're not reading lips, you can't hear. That's right. I trade with you any time. Oh, you don't mean that, Barney. Sure I do. Sometimes I'd give anything to be able to turn it all off. You got something very important, Mary. It's kind of a gift. Huh. I never thought of it that way. You see, I can't just turn it off. I gotta run. I gotta get away fast. I need your car, Mary. I gotta take your car. Because I gotta get away. I gotta run. I gotta keep running. You know, Barney, you're a very nice guy. Shall we try him with a new bait? Okay.
we didn't have better luck. We started too late. We can try again tomorrow morning if you'd like. About 5.30? They should be pretty hungry by then. 5.30? You got a date. Good. Mary. Did you say something? I had a wonderful day. Oh, thank you, Barney. So did I. Here are your keys. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Willie, I'm giving it to you straight. This place is driving me crazy. How about it, Willie? But where do you want to go, Barney? In the village. In the village? I just came back from there. Well, there's some things I gotta get. But I got you everything your little heart can desire. Look, nice pumpernickel. I know you like it. I got you chocolate bars. Willie. And look, bone turkey. <laughs> Listen to and me, Willie. And deviled ham, pickets. I got you something to read. Nice books. I want a paper, Willie. Tonight's paper, the latest news. Oh, paper. I, I got a paper, too. I, I just forgot to give it to you. Look, absolutely nothing new. Now, yeah, still nationwide manhunt. We still want it for murder, but absolutely no clues. Now, doesn't that make you happy? Give me the keys, Willie. The what? The keys. <laughs> no. Let me have the keys for the car. No. <laughs> Just for a while. Yeah. It's not what you think, Willie. I'm not going to go off and leave you. No. I wouldn't leave you stuck here, Willie. I just want the car for 20 minutes. I can't stand it here, Willie. I can't stand looking at you. <laughs> hey, don't get away too far. We are wanted for murder. I brought you some clean dish towels. I, I didn't want to disturb you. I left them in the kitchen. Did you see my friend? No, no one. The kitchen door was open. Did my friend see you? Well, I don't think so. Why? I was just hoping you wouldn't try to horn in on our fishing date tomorrow. We're still going, aren't we? Early in the morning? Yes, 5.30. Fine. Good. See you then. Good night. Good night. in your mind. What? The girl you saw in the kitchen, you think she heard us. She didn't hear us, Willie. She's deaf. She's stone deaf. Oh, no. Why, oh, that's too bad. Poor girlie.
not giving up already, are you? No, I'm not giving up. <sighs> this should be biting good this morning. I want you to get the first one. Barney, I don't know how to explain this. Maybe it's you, but I have more real confidence in myself than I've ever had in my life. I'm glad. In two days, I feel like a new person. That's why I say it must be you. Mary, I'm no good. What do you mean? I'm no good. Please don't say that. I mean it. If you're going to talk that way, I'm going to tune you out. No, you're not. You're going to look at me. Mary, I'm just no good. I messed my life up a long time ago. Barney, I'll always remember these two days. So will I. I wish I could tell you how much I appreciate what you've done for me. I haven't done anything. Maybe you didn't know it. Maybe you didn't even try. But you did it anyway. I wish there was something I could do for you. You've done enough. No matter what I did, I, I could never really thank you. You know, maybe I wasn't ready for it before, but... I think you're right. I feel sure I will meet somebody someday. Sure you will. I know you will. How about some coffee? Oh, oh sure. The thermos is in the trunk. Here's the keys. You know, Mary, you would have been good for me, too. Real good. If it wasn't too late. But there's one guy I've got to take care of. And thanks for the car, honey. I'm in a hurry. I told you to get out of my way. thinking about it. I've been thinking about it for years. Oh, if we only knew then of the things that they can do now for deafness. By golly, I'm going to send you to that specialist if I have to sell this place to do it. I want to live long enough to see you married. You can't meet anybody in that school down there teaching and helping those kids. It's about time somebody was helping you. You can't spend your life down there teaching those kids in that school. You expect to have a home of your own someday. You've got to think about that, Mary. Dad, can't you understand there's no hope for me? Now, you quit talking like that. That isn't what you teach those kids, is it? No, no. I guess right now I just can't seem to practice what I preach. I had one experience. It took me a long time to get over it. And last week I ran into him with his wife. And his wife might have been me, only I was deaf. That made the difference. 
That's why I really came down here. Try to forget all over again. Remember what they say about one drop of water? Doesn't make an ocean. You're better off without him. Come on, Dad. We've got a long drive ahead of you. All right. I'll stop in the village and send Timmy up here. He's a good boy. He'll give you a hand. All right, Dad. I'll feel much easier knowing there's a man around. Here, give me that, honey. I, I hope I've put everything in here. If I've forgotten anything, just write me a letter. I'll send you a card. Take good care of yourself. Thanks, Dad. I will. Have a good trip. Remember now, you drive carefully. I will. Screen Directors Playhouse. Bringing you each week an outstanding original screenplay. Chosen and directed by one of the country's foremost motion picture directors. Tonight's Screen Directors Playhouse proudly presents Miss Ida Lupino, renowned for her direction of The Hitchhiker and The Bigamist. For this evening, Miss Lupino brings us the searching story of a deaf girl and the man she is afraid to love, entitled Number Five Checked Out. In tonight's cast are Teresa Wright, Peter Laurie, and William Tallman. Just about does it. Hmm. Mary, are you sure you did the right thing in coming up here? Of course I did. I love it here. But I'll worry about you every moment that I'm gone. Now, that's foolish. The season opening in two weeks is certainly plenty to do. We just sit down and relax. You know, there's nothing to worry about. It just doesn't seem right for me to be running off like this. With Uncle Martin sick, you have to go whether you want to or not. Maybe next year I'll have enough put by to send you to that specialist in the East. Dad, if we start thinking about that now, we'll never get you out of here. <laughs> 